What's up guys and welcome back to the channel where the subject of today's video comes in the form of this Ram Rebel. Now the Ram Rebel represents a recent trend in the pickup truck world which involves taking a standard, in this case 1500 pickup truck, and giving it a more rugged appearance on the outside, which often includes lifting it, throwing on some beefier rubber, adding skid plates, and of course lots of cladding. Case in point, meet the Ram Rebel. Now the Ram isn't the only manufacturer to adopt this recent practice. In fact, fact, virtually every major truck marquee out there has a model which adopts a similar formula. In the domestic market, we have brands like Ford, Chevrolet, and GMC with offerings like the F-150 Tremor, Chevrolet Silverado Trail Boss, and GMC Sierra AT4. On the import side of things, we have trucks like the Toyota Tundra TRD Pro and Nissan Titan Pro 4X. These are just a few offerings that spring to mind, but there may be others out there. Anyway, getting back to the Ram Rebel, if I had one word to describe this truck, it would be versatile. This seems kind of obvious since we are talking about a truck here, which usually is defined as the epitome of practicality. But when I say versatile, I really do mean it. This truck can be used for all occasions, whether that be in the form of an off-road expedition, your daily commute to work, or a weekend trip to Home Depot. So I kind of glossed over roughly what the rebel gets you in the beginning of the video but let's be a bit more specific now on the outside we see a modified hood with a large hood vent a restyled grill black cladding as opposed to surfaces that would usually be painted skid plates tow hooks and knobby off-road tires in conjunction with smaller wheels all these exterior enhancements add to the already belligerent styling and set it apart from the standard offering in a significant way. More enhancements come in the form of mechanical components, like Bilstein shocks in the front and rear, which look incredible and add about 2.5 inches to the Rebel's overall height compared to a standard Ram. Other additions include a part-time electronic transfer case, granted you do opt for the 4x4 configuration, and an electronic locking differential. Now let's talk about some specs, under the hood the Ram Rebel can be had with three engine choices. A 260 horsepower, diesel only turbocharged 3 liter, this is the last year for the diesel so get it while you can. Next we have the Pentastar engine which produces 305 horsepower and 296 pound feet of torque. And finally the Big Daddy which this truck is equipped with which is the Hemi V8 which produces 395 horsepower and 410 pound feet of torque. This Ram is also equipped with the e-torque system, which is a near $1,200 option, but worth it in my opinion. I did some research on the system, and in layman's terms, what it basically includes is a belt-driven generator, which is powered by a 48-volt mild hybrid system, a battery which sits elsewhere, but increases efficiency and can add power on demand, especially during fuel-draining scenarios like stop-and-go traffic. It also assists with the start-stop system in making the transition from stop to start as seamless as possible. More on this during the drive. In terms of drivetrains, all-wheel drive is standard in Canada, but in the US you can opt to have 4x4, which makes the truck a bit cheaper, but if you want to add 4x4, it is about a $4,000 option. In terms of transmissions, you can only have one across the board, which is the 8-speed torque flight automatic. The Ram Rebel is only available in crew cab configuration with a 5-foot 7-inch bed. And in terms of towing, the Hemi V8 can tow up to 11,000 pounds and some change. But if you do opt for the smaller engine, you'll only be limited to 7,000 pounds and some change in terms of towing. In terms of trim levels, we have 8 different ones to choose from across North America. Of course, there are some packaging differences based on what region you you're in so i'll start off with the canadian side of things since i am in canada in canada we have the tradesman as the base model the bighorn the sport rebel laramie limited longhorn limited and finally the trx Across the border, we have the Tradesman, the Tradesman HFE, which throws on a few extra goodies like side steps and bigger wheels, the Bighorn, the Laramie, the Rebel, the Limited, Longhorn, the Limited, and finally the TRX. We already talked about the exterior appearance of the Ram Rebel, but now let's get on to the interior. Unlike its brawny exterior, the interior of the Ram 
exudes class and sophistication, with the right options of course. From the get-go, the Ram Rebel comes pretty basic only sporting a few amenities. You'll have to splurge another $3,000 or so to equip the Rebel 12 package here in Canada or what's known as the Level 1 Equipment Group in America to get that large 12-inch infotainment display. The display itself is amazing. It's crisp, it, it's sharp. The menus look great, it doesn't look dated, the navigation itself looks amazing as well, it's not pixelated. The rear camera is a lot of places where car companies tend to have a bit of trouble because they are often blurry, but this one is clear as day can be. Pair that with the front and rear parking sonars, and I mean parking this thing is an absolute breeze. If you want to go one step further, you can equip this thing with the surround view camera. It gives you cameras under the mirrors and in the front, which makes parking even easier but this setup alone with the crisp rear cameras the parking sonar your side view mirrors and a bit of common sense makes parking this thing breeze also included in that package are heated front seats a heated steering wheel navigation and a wi-fi hotspot amongst other things moving past the options allows us to talk about the interior itself which can be distinguished by this bright red trim which adds a certain level of flair in addition it also adds some color to the seat backs however if you like to be more low key and prefer a darker color a solid black interior can also be had wanted to go back for just a second here and touch on some of the other options the ram rebel can be equipped with other options include a class 4 receiver hitch which of course will aid in towing that is a 445 dollar option you can also equip it with a bigger fuel tank which obviously lets you go further we also have air suspension or four corner air suspension which is about 1800 dollars or so and of course the all important engine block heater as well for $95. We also have different packaging groups like the advanced safety group which adds a bunch of driver assist features like adaptive cruise control, automatic high beam, lane keep assist, pedal and perpendicular parking assist, pedestrian emergency braking, surround view camera system and tailgate warning letting you know that the tailgate is open. Next we have the bed utility group which is $545. Next we have the comfort and convenience group for $595. Next, we have the GT package for a mind-boggling $3,000, but to be fair, it does add quite a few different options. Next, we have the night package, which, as the name suggests, blacks everything out. Then we have the level 1 equipment group, which we already went over. Then we have the level 2 equipment group, which is a mind-boggling $4,500, which adds even more things everything i'm not really going to take the time to read everything out specifically but i will post up things on the screen and finally we have the technology group which gives you a heads-up display amongst other things again i'll post up these individual packaging on the screen right now and i should mention that the pricing mentioned are in us dollars moving on back into the interior of the rebel gets you a custom badge letting you know what you're driving and new for 2023 is a fully digital gauge cluster allowing for more customizability and best of all it's available on sport models and up here in Canada and Rebel and up in the States so no need to opt for the highest trim level. The rest of the interior is a pleasant place to be with the stellar build quality and ample storage space. Legroom is also not a concern with the crew cab configuration which offers miles of legroom for rear seat passengers. I may have exaggerated that part a bit, but really, you will really have to sit in the back of this thing and try it for yourself. There really is a ton of legroom. If the rear seats are not in use, they can be flipped up to haul larger items inside the bed. Three-zone climate control means that rear passengers can also travel in comfort and adjust their climate on the fly without having to request the front occupants to do so for them. And yeah, that pretty much sums up all of the Ram Rebel interior. Enough of that though, now let's get on the road and see how this thing drives. So here we are behind the wheel of the Ram Rebel and the Rebel trim itself, or add-on, whatever you prefer to call it, hasn't anything new to the Ram lineup. It's actually been available for a few years now. There obviously are some changes, most of them do lie on the outside, like a more rugged exterior design, you get these beefier all-terrain tires, they are Goodyear Wrangler tires, you also get a suspension lift kit, so it's not primarily cosmetics, you get Bilstein performance shocks in the front and back, and e-locking, or what Stellantis calls e-locking, locking differential, skid plates, 
Under the hood, this Ram Rebel is running the 5.7 liter Hemi V8. The Hemi engine, as we all know, has been a great success for the brand and it's actually been fairly reliable as well. This one actually is a bit different because it's fitted with the e-torque electric system, which is kind of new to the Ram lineup. It's a 48 volt mile with hybrid system, which is becoming quite common and it runs things like the start stop system and can give you a boost in torque when needed. How much torque to be exact? Well, the, perform the Hemi engine itself produces 395 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque, but the e-torque system at times can deliver up to 130 pound-feet of torque and a few additional horsepower. I believe the figure is 17 horsepower to be exact. Start stop systems, I'm not a huge fan of, but this one is amazing. I've been trying it out for the last few days here, and well, the 48 volt, volt mild hybrid system just makes a seamless transition from stop to start. So, if you are not a fan of the start stop system, I highly recommend you try the one out in this Ram Rebel with the e-torque system because I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. As far as ride comfort goes, there are some pros and cons, of course. Cons are these beefy tires. They look, they are great to look at, and I imagine they're great off-road as well. But when you are behind the wheel, they can produce a droning noise as tires would typically hardcore um, tread patterns tend to do, and this one is no exception. In terms of the engine, it is buttery smooth. I mean, this Hemi engine has been around for a long time, and Stellantis, formerly FCA, have been making small tweaks here and there to perfect it, and now it's at a point where it's basically perfect. I mean, the power delivery is incredibly smooth. Paired with their 8-speed torque flight transmission, it is an excellent combination. In terms of road noise, it's almost non-existent. I mean, they've really added some good sound deadening to this truck. I mean, they should because this thing weighs a lot. And adding more insulation really won't make an effect on the overall weight of this thing. In terms of visibility, visibility is great. I'm not really a truck person, so to say. I drive a small car on a daily basis, but driving this truck here for a few days has really converted me, and I'm kind of dreaded going back to driving a regular car, primarily because of the height of this thing. I mean, a regular Ram sits about 77.5 inches off the ground if you want to get technical. This one sits a bit higher, about two inches higher at 79.2 inches. If you have never driven a truck in your life before, it will be a bit intimidating at first because you kind of don't know where your blind spots are and this truck is fairly big from the get-go spend a few hours behind the wheel and you're slowly become acclimated and really prefer sitting this high up and having a high command view of everything that's going on around you well guys I hope you did enjoy this short and hopefully informative review of the Ram 1500 Rebel if you did enjoy it let me know your thoughts in the comment section below thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next episode